What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Carlo Craft Bushcraft. This is your first time here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey learning and developing bushcraft skills. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna do a gear loadout. This is for a canoe trip that I've got planned. It's my first ever canoe trip. I'm really excited about it and I thought it would be cool just to show you guys the gear that I plan to take. So just to give you a, a little bit of context, um, doing a canoe trip is something that I've wanted to do ever since I got interested in bushcraft. All of my favourite YouTubers uh, do them and they seem to have so much fun doing them and they just look absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's something, as I said, that I wanted to do for a long time. So uh, options in the UK uh, are kind of limited, especially compared to somewhere like North America. Uh, but I was researching around on the internet and I came across a company called Canoe Trail and I'll leave a link to them in the, in the description down below. So if you're interested in this stuff, go check them out. They, uh, they seem to be really good so far. Uh, they organise canoe trips for anyone and everyone of all experiences, basically anybody that wants to try it. So I have booked one of them. Uh, the one I've booked is only a short one. Um, there's quite a lot of restrictions around what they can and can't do at the moment with all of the COVID stuff that's going on. Uh, this is pretty much, I think, the only one they're running. So anyway, uh, it's only two days. It's two days, one night, uh, and only involves around six miles of paddling and portaging on each day. So I figured that would be quite a good place to start to see if I actually enjoy this kind of stuff. I mean, I have a, an inkling that I'm going to love it, but you never know. So anyway, so, uh, so I've booked on this, um, and with that in mind, because it's only one night, I've really tried to keep the amount of gear that I'm going to take down to a minimum. You know, I don't need loads of food, um, and my bag that I'm going to take is only 30 litres, so, uh, so I really wanted to keep the gear uh, as minimal as I could. Um, all of the stuff that I'm going to show you, all the stuff that I'm taking, I will leave links to all of it um, in the description down below. It's all really high quality gear, so if you're interested in, in getting any of it, um, just follow those and you'll, you'll be able to find them. Uh, so I'll stop waffling and I'll show you the stuff that I'm going to take. Okay, let's start with the big stuff, shall we? So first things first, this is my uh, this is the pack that I'm going to take. This is a Hidden Woodsman Forest Ruck. It holds 30 litres um, and is an amazing piece of kit. Um, they are all handmade, all of these bags are handmade by a guy called Malcolm, um, who runs a company called The Hidden Woodsman, which is based in the USA, um, and the quality couldn't be higher. They are so durable, so well put together, and so comfy when you've got them on, I, I can't recommend them highly enough. Um, they do have a price tag to match, but if you're looking to invest in a, in a decent pack, you can't go wrong with The Hidden Woodsman. They are fantastic. Oh, by the way, these straps that you see here uh, attached to the bottom, which I'm going to... Uh, pop my sling bag in and um, do uh, come separately they're not sold with the bag itself but you know you'll see that when you go on their website so that's my bag uh, next up is my sleeping bag now ideally I would like one that's a bit smaller than this um, or at least a, a compression sack that would sort of condense it a bit more but that's beside the point anyway this is a Euro Hike Adventure 300 that I got from Mountain Warehouse so it's uh, inexpensive you know really easy to come across a three season bag this is the bag that I've used for my last two or three uh, campouts. Um, weather conditions are going to be similar on my canoe trip to, to the ones that, that I've had over the last few weeks. Um, can't go wrong with this. Kept me nice and warm. Absolutely no problems with it at all. So, yeah, good bit of kit. Uh, so in terms of shelter, uh, in here, in this compression dry sack, I have my uh, DD 3x3 meter tarp in Coyote Brown. Um, DD make really really good stuff, um, their tarp is perfect, it's still nylon, um, waterproof, I've used it loads and loads of times, great, can't go wrong with that, really really happy with it. So carrying on with shelter and sleeping, uh, other thing then is my sleeping pad, so this is uh, an Ecotech Outdoors Highburn Series Ultra Light Sleeping Pad, uh, folds down quite nice and small into this, uh, into this packaging sack thing, um, and it's really good. I've had no issues with it, um, nice and comfy, uh, and has kept me warm as well. It's, I don't think it's insulated actually, just thinking about it, it's not insulated, but I don't think I'm going to need that uh, where I'm going, because it's supposed to be 23, degree, 23 degrees Celsius during the day, maybe get down to about 14 at night. Uh, it's not even supposed to rain, so I'm not, not room remotely concerned, so yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm not going to take a pillow this time. Uh, because I'm trying to keep the gear minimal, usually I would take my, my travel pillow, my camping pillow from Mountain Warehouse. Um, but I'm not going to uh, this time. What I thought I would do is uh, maybe stuff up a jumper or stuff my um, <clears throat> my waterproof jacket. Hopefully it won't be wet. Stuff my waterproof jacket because that's a puffy jacket. It's here. So this is a trespass something or other puffy jacket that I got off the internet. Um, I figure if I fold this up because it's a puffy jacket, it's got a lot of air in it. It'd be quite comfy as a, as a pillow. So that's 
my pillow. So they're my biggest, bulkiest bits of kit. The rest of this is, is nice and small. So uh, I'll show you this quickly. So this is a kind of a possibles pouch. It's basically just a bag full of bits and pieces that I'm gonna need. So it's things like my toothbrush, hand sanitizer, bug spray, um, wet wipes, um, a little towel, etc., etc. things like that. I've also got um, a space blanket in there if I need it, just in case, um, a compass, whistle, etc., etc., etc. Um This little bag I got from the Bushcraft store, I think. So again, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Um, really good little bag, nice and compact and keeps everything in it that I need in it. So that's that. Uh, next up, I have my um, leather gloves. These, I will be honest with you, I don't know where they came from because they were bought for me by my dad for a, uh, a either birthday or Christmas present, I can't remember which, uh, but they're really high quality and I, and I really like them, so thank you very much, Dad. Uh, okay, so cooking, that's a good thing to go through. So cooking, um, I'm gonna take my TBS 500ml uh, billy can, nothing uh, overly uh, extravagant, does the job really well. I can boil water up in this because where we're going, where we're camping, there's no running water. Um, so we'll need to purify our water before we drink it. So I can boil it up in that if I need to. I can also cook my dinner. So speaking of, uh, my food is in this bag here. Uh, so in this, I haven't got a lot. I've got, because as I said, we're only going for one night, so I don't need much. Uh, so I've got some dehydrated pasta, some chicken pasta, uh, some beef jerky, and a couple of cereal bars for breakfast. Because the figure will be you know, leaving pretty early in the morning anyway, so I won't need to, um, won't need, I won't, the other thing is I don't want to take things like bacon and, and steak and stuff, like, you know, while it tastes a lot better, it takes up a lot of room, um, and it's just easier to, to do it like this, so that's that. There's also coffee and sugar and stuff in there as well for the morning, so, yeah, so that's that. Okay, we're flying through now, um, so in line with uh, with water filtration and stuff, uh, as with the, the billy can, uh, this is my water bolts, this is from a company called water to go um, and it actually has a filter system built into it. Uh, these are really high quality, um, the filter itself is, is fantastic, the company claimed that you could drink sort of water out of a puddle with it, I'm not going to test that, um, but I've used this a few times. Uh, drinking water out of locks and stuff in Scotland, things like that, and I've never had a problem with it. So, uh, so I'm taking that with me as well, just in case I can't be bothered to boil anything and wait for it to cool. Um, I've got my brand new cook set that I'm taking with me, uh, my hand-carved cook set. I don't know what wood this is, to be honest with you. I think it's ash, but I just really like it. It fits really comfortably in your hand. Uh, it's got a little thing there, so I can attach it to the outside of my bag if I need to as well. So, uh, yeah, so I really like that. What else we got? I'm also taking my Pathfinder head torch, three different settings and a, an SOS setting if I need it, which I don't think I will. Uh, this I just got off Amazon, I think, uh, relatively inexpensive, takes AAA batteries, has worked really well for me so far, no problems with this at all. So yeah, take that for the evening when we need to see what we're doing. Um, what else have I got here? Oh, I've got my cutlery. So in this little pouch, I've got a Spoon, fork configuration that comes apart, uh, which is really cool. I'll just throw it on the floor. <laughs> it's got a knife in there as well, so that's what I will use to eat and stir, etc, etc, etc. You guys know how it works. And what else have I got up here? I've also got... This um, is a really cool little pouch uh, that I got from the Bushcraft store that has my fire lighting kit in it. So it's got... Uh, a fire steel on the side of it there uh, that has a striker attached to it so I don't have to ruin my knife uh, and it's also got this little tin that I've put some tinder in so I've got some cotton wool in there I've got some char cloth tinder uh, I've got a few uh, matches uh, and some uh, little wicks as well um, to get my fire going in the evening to cook and purify water and, and you know create ambience and all that sort of thing uh, next up is this so this is a power pack so if my phone dies or, or my camera dies or whatever I should be able to recharge some of the batteries using this this is a, an anchor uh, power pack it works really really well holds a charge really well and I should be able to charge my phone at least sort of three or four times from near dead to uh, to full charge with this so uh, so this is a really great bit of kit so if you if you need a power pack go for anchor they're they're brilliant okay what else here I have my Castrum number 10 belt knife. So this is the belt knife that I'm going to take with me. 
Uh, this is my favourite knife uh, at the moment. Uh, I really like it, fits in the sheath really well. Great bit of kit. If you need a knife, Castrum are the way to go. It, the, for relatively inexpensive knives anyway. Um, at some point, of course, I'd like to get a, a custom made Adventure Sworn or something like that, but at the moment I don't have you know, £500 to spend on a knife, so in the meantime this works really well. Uh, my other cutting tool I'm going to take, um, because I'm being wary of space and things like that, I don't want to take my... While I would prefer to take um, a bigger axe like my, uh, my Grand Spurs Brooks Ray Mears Bushcraft uh, Forest Axe, that would be great, but it takes up a lot of room and I don't know how much room I'm going to have in the kayak. Um, I think they're actually closed tops, so I'm not sure. I think it's a closed top kayak, as the name kayak would suggest. Um, so I don't know how much room I'm going to have, so I'm, I'm trying to keep uh, stuff to a minimum and save space. So instead of my big axes, I'm going to take my little uh, Mora knife, my Mora knife um, hatchet. So this was the first uh, hatchet I bought. Um, does the job reasonably well. It's a bit dinged up now. I can see there's a fair few chips and stuff in it, so actually I need to make sure that I go over the blade and, and sharpen it up and get those out before we go. Uh, I'm not going to take a saw, uh, namely because my friend Irish is coming with me. Irish you've seen on a few videos recently. Um, if you haven't, go check him out. He's, uh, he's really funny, he's a really good guy, and I'm hoping he's going to bring um, a saw so that we can kind of share tools. I bring an axe, he, bring he brings a saw, we both save a bit of space. I'm hoping. So Irish, if you're watching this, make sure you bring your saw. Um, what else have I got? So lastly, and this is really importantly, my hip flask. A hip flask because I like my whiskey, my hip flask I'm going to take with me, which I will fill with a uh, lager full and 16 year old. I bought a bottle the other day. I love that whiskey. I love how smoky it is. So I'll be, uh, be taking that with me as well. Not to get drunk because we need to be compass mentis the next day when we try and paddle back because nobody wants to drown. So, but you know what it's like. Fire, whiskey, good buddy. Yeah, you know, you know. And last but not least, I've got a new toy. So this is a little action cam that I bought. So this is a Dragon Touch Vision 4 Lite um, action camera. Uh, it comes in a waterproof case. It's really, really lightweight. Uh, it's got loads and loads of different um, attachments that I've got with it as well. Uh, so this is what I'll be using to actually film um, when I'm in the canoe. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to doing this. This um, was is not an expensive camera. It's not a GoPro or anything like that. Um, it doesn't even have an internal microphone. There is an app. There is a, an option to to uh, to attach an external microphone. Um, but you know the reason that I want it is is to have it on the uh, on the kayak. Uh, so it needs to be waterproof. So when it's in this waterproof case like this, there's no way of getting the the microphone in. So whatever. So, so the footage that I take when I'm in the canoe, uh, unfortunately, will not have any sound, so I'll have to put some cool music over it, something like this. Um, but yeah, so it's really great. Uh, I've used it uh, a couple of times just around the house to see what it looks like. The picture quality is okay, so I'm hoping it won't be terrible. Uh, and it came with loads of different attachments, like, uh, like this one, for example. So this one, <clears throat> I'll just show you very quickly. So the little mount fits in there. Attach this in here, he says confidently. Come on. There we go. So it came with head mount. So I can look really cool when I'm in my kayak, canoeing around with, uh, with my camera on my head. I do also have a, uh, a chest mount as well, um, which I don't know if I'm going to take, namely because I'm assuming Canoe Trail will want us to wear a buoyancy aid. I mean, I can swim. I'm, a, I'm actually a very strong swimmer, so I don't particularly feel like I need a buoyancy aid, but I'm assuming that we'll have to wear them for safety reasons, so I don't think the chest mount would go around it particularly. But yeah, so I've got the head mount, uh, and I also, <laughs> just for a bit of fun, uh, bought this, which is a hat that has a mount on it as well. So I thought I could look really cool and have my camera mounted to my hat. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do, whether I'm going to use the, the head mount with the straps uh, and wear my own hat or just use this one. Um, the reason for this particularly is um, because it's meant to be quite sunny when we're going, um, I want to be able to make sure that I keep the sun out of my eyes and I'm not squinting constantly. So I thought one with a peak, um, a mount with a peak might work a bit better. So we'll see. Anyway, either way, I'm going to look really cool. Mm. The other cool thing that this camera does have is it came with a, a little remote control that I can strap to my wrist uh, and I can use this to uh, stop and start recording and to take pictures as well. So um, 
that I think is is a really really good thing to have, especially considering I I doubt the battery power on these will last a particularly long time. So it's going to be a case of you know sort of recording for two or three minutes, turning it off for a bit, and then and then going again. Because obviously I want to be able to try and record both days. Uh, so I've got two batteries for this, two uh, little 64 gig um, memory cards. So that should see me through. Um, we'll see. If not, I should be able to charge the little batteries off my anchor pack anyway, if if they die. So we shall see. So yeah, so that's uh, that's it. That's all the gear I'm taking. Um, oh no, it's not. It's a lie. The other thing that I'm going to take is this little tripod. So I am going to take my big camera as well. Um, obviously, the big camera will have to be in the bag when we're in the canoes, uh, and I'll be using the, the the action camera. But when we're at camp, I want to be able to use my my big my big camera just because the pictures and sound is so much better. So, well, as I said, there is no sound off the little one anyway. So if I want sound, I need my big camera. Uh, but I really don't want to take the big tripod that I've got. Um, again, it's all safe spacing stuff like that. safe space saving even. So I bought this little mini tripod. Uh, just off Amazon, a very, very, very inexpensive. Um, it's tiny, but it's okay for sort of holding with your hands, so I can do some vlogging-y kind of stuff. Uh, and I have tried it out, and it does just about support my D DLSRs, DLSRs weight on the top of it. So we may not be able to get any particularly high shots unless I kind of wrap it around a branch or something like that, because the uh, the legs do move and enable me to do stuff like that. So I might be able to wrap it on a high branch and have the the camera pointing down into camp. I don't know. We shall see. Anyway, but that's it. That's all the gear I'm taking. All right, guys, we're all packed up. Um, I've actually got a fair bit of room left, both in the top of the bag and up the sides, uh, which I'm really happy about, uh, namely because I've got to fit my camera in. Uh, I want to be able to put a, a couple of nice beers in there as well uh, to have once we're, once we're done for the day. Um, and I also need to have a little think about clothing as well. I'm not going to take a complete change of clothes. Um, I just don't think I'm going to need it. Am I going to fall in? I, I don't think I'm going to fall in. I don't think I'm going to fall in. If I, I tell you what, if I do fall in, then I'll, I'll get wet. And I will simply start a fire and dry my clothes over the fire and do it that way. So I'm not going to take a complete change of clothes. I might take a pair of socks uh, and maybe some pants just for, for comfort. But other than that, I'm not worried about it. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. As I said before, I'll leave links in the description to, to where you can get all of my gear, and I'll leave a link to Canoe Trail as well. As always, please feel free to comment, share, like this video, and if you're not already, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell uh, icon to stay notified, and I shall see you again very soon when I'm on the water. Take care.